In this video, I'm going to show how to use the datasets feature to create training, validation, and test datasets to train three different models, and then use those datasets in the evaluation module to compare the models and choose the one with the highest test performance. I'm going to start from scratch with a new app and use a dataset of animals from beginning to end. Let's get started. This here is the community page when you first open Clarify Portal, and now we're going to create an application. I've done this before, so I've got the words already in there. Datasets demo, let's see how datasets work as a description. We create it, and then let's go into the app. Here is the app. As you see, it's completely empty. And we're going to upload our inputs, which are, in this case, pictures of animals. We're going to create a train dataset for the training of the model. And we have, I believe there are 500 images in this of different animals. We drag it into the upload box and hit upload. And I've shortened this a little bit because we don't want to sit here waiting, but we have now uploaded all of our animals. You can scroll all the way to the bottom just to make sure they all loaded properly. And it appears they're all there. There we go, 500 have been successfully uploaded. So the next thing we're going to do is we want to upload our test data set. This is going to be the final check once we've chosen the model. So we again select the test one. I've split this data set roughly into 500, 100, 100 for training, validation, and test. So we have 100 files for test and 100 files for validation. Here we have all of our test data successfully uploaded. Now we're going to finally create and upload a validation set. Now, in case you're unfamiliar with this, the validation sets are used while you are choosing your model. You can usually try the different hyperparameters or try different models using the validation set. And then finally, once it's done, you would use the test set as a final check on the performance of the model to see how it works in a simulated real world situation. So we have 100 then in the validation set, and we have all of our data has been successfully in there. There are 700 images. Now we're going to start labeling our data. We have a great way to do that. We have a cross-modal or multimodal function where you can literally just type in horse, and our general model will find all the pictures of whatever you're looking for, so in this case, horses, and basically select them. So we're just scrolling here to see what we've got. There seems to be a cartoon dog in the middle of it, so we're going to unselect that. And we're going to label this category as horse. So this these concepts are horses. And done. Now we're going to clear that out because we have four more animals to do. That's everything that's unlabeled. Now we're going to look through and see what we have under dog. So once again, we've searched for the term dog using our general model, and we're scrolling through it, looking for everything that the model thinks is a dog. Now, I see a sheep in the lower left, so we probably want to unselect that. But otherwise, oh no, we got, we got another sheep and another sheep. So that's it. Everything else it got correctly. All of the least probable dogs are at the bottom. It actually orders it uh, as a in terms of probability of it being correct. So when you do a check to see if everything it's thinking is a dog or whatever search term you put in, check the bottom first because that's going to be where anything questionable could be. And, well, everything that we left in there was a sheep. So we're just going to straight up label those as a sheep. And we've not only labeled it, but we've added that as a concept to the model. So it is now in the list there on the left under labels, and we can even search for sheep. And then once again, we scroll through it, looking at them, making sure they all look like sheep until we get to the bottom where occasionally there might be something that isn't a sheep. In this case, everything looks great. So we can simply select everything and then label it as a sheep.
And now we're three down, two to go. Two more animals. These are the unlabeled ones. As you see, there's oddly a cat in there. There's no other animal in with that cat, so we're going to delete it. The other cat has a dog behind it, so despite it not being the foreground, there is still a dog in there, so we should label that as a dog. We don't ha we're not explicitly labeling cats. And then that's a pig, so we can definitely get rid of that. And let's do the next search to see what we're finding. We're looking for butterflies. And now this is a pretty easy one to spot. You can see they're all there. They're all butterflies. I saw a moth, but I guess we're not distinguishing between those. And we're done. So label that as butterflies. Now we clear the field again, and we're on the last animal that we're going to label which is an elephant. Now that's an easy spot. There's a butterfly right there. Let's label that as a butterfly that it didn't catch to get it out of our unlabeled images. And hopefully just about everything left is an elephant. So let's search for elephant and do the same thing. We scroll down through here, elephants everywhere, nothing but elephants, elephant, elephant. Wait a minute, that's a rhino. Let's get rid of that one. We don't, we're not looking for rhinos in this data set. Sneaky rhino. Everything else looks good. Double checking everything to make sure no other rhinos got in there. And let's label this everything as an elephant. Boom. And that covers all of the images that the model was able to find through the text search. Now, these are the parts that are left. So there's one here. We're going to select the horses. We did. It didn't catch all the horses. Some of these are kind of hard to recognize. That one's merged with the post. There's some donkeys doing something there. There's part of a horse head, an odd view of a horse. So we're just cleaning up the horse images that the model didn't catch. There are not that many. Remember, we were dealing with 500 images in total. So this is... The sum total of everything it didn't catch is very small. So label those as horses. They are labeled. Let's refresh it just so we can see. We can definitely delete this cartoon dog. We can delete that terrible picture of a dog and that donkey thing, this man. And I think everything else does have one of our animals in it. So I'm starting from the beginning again. I think that's a sheep. Actually, it might be a cow, but no. Well, I'll just leave it as a sheep. I, I'm not really a farm animal guy. All right, so we're labeling these as sheep. Uh, I hope I got the farm animals right. Now we've cut down significantly on what was there. We have what's obviously a dog. Let's label that as a dog. And then everything else is pretty clear. There's a horse, a butterfly, and some elephants. So let's clean that up. This pretty butterfly. Done. We've got some very artistic pictures of elephants as well there. Well, this one's a horse. Done. Let's grab the very last ones that are unlabeled. And those are elephants. Now, the crazy thing about this is we've just labeled... 700 images of these five animals. We didn't necessarily know which one was in which image, but we have managed to categorize 700 images all at once. And because they were already sorted into these data sets of validation, test, and train, they're already partitioned. We, could, we don't have to do anything more, and we can move straight to making our models. First one we're going to do is a transfer learn, which is very, very fast. This is just transferring the knowledge of one model that already trained on an existing task that's similar onto this one, which is specific to these, these five animals. We set the, the model ID, the data set. We choose all the concepts that we've labeled. Uh, we're going to set this to true because uh, they're mutually exclusive. We don't have pictures with uh, multiple of copies of these different animals. There are, there are no pictures of horses and sheep together. And it's now training, training, and done. That's how fast it trains when you use transfer learning. That was, what, two seconds, three seconds at most?
Going next, we're going to train these other models using deep training, which is much slower. We're going to choose the recommended one for deep training, which is a ResNet 50 model. These are common computer vision architectures, and we're simply just choosing the same, all the defaults. We are grabbing the same concepts, and everything else we can just leave with the defaults. We've already chosen the template, and done. Now, it's going to start training, and this is going to take probably about 40 minutes or so to train from what I recall. Now, we do the same thing here. We're going to try a different one. Let's try EfficientNet. This is another architecture you can try. It's good to fool around with these and see which one works best for the images you have to see. It entirely depends on your use case, which is going to do best. And same thing, select all the concepts, and we're done. That's how easy it is to train these models. So it's training again, and this is going to take a little while. And through the magic of visual effects, I am going to jump ahead in time so we can see the results of these trainings. So let's start out by checking the really fast one, which was the transfer learn, transfer learn animals. We didn't have to jump forward in time on this one, but we did. And what it's going to do here, it's going to evaluate the, the metrics for this model using its training data. So this is going to be evaluating on the train data. This is useful as sort of a, a getting started point, but it's not really that useful for choosing a model because it's like giving somebody a book to study from and then giving them a test with the exact same content as the book. So anyhow, we're going in here to hit calculate on all of the different evaluations for these different models. It's going to take a little while, so prepare to be catapulted forward in time. And we're here. Now we can look again at the result of the evaluation. This is, I believe, for the efficient net. And we can see that it got everything right. It managed to do a prediction on the training data perfectly, which is really not that surprising because it was trained on it. So what we're going to do now is evaluate on the validation data set. So we can switch the holdout data set, which is the data set it hasn't seen yet, and we can switch it to validation or test. And first we're going to use validation because we don't choose a model based on the test data, we choose it based on the validation data. So while it's doing that, let's get the other models also doing an evaluation based on the validation data set. This one actually made a mistake. This one made a mistake even on the training data. Made a minor mistake there, but let's try with the validation data. And then we're going to go and finish it off by giving the same test to the transfer learn model. This was the one that trained in about three seconds. As you see, it actually did perfectly again on the training data. Let's give it the holdout data set of validation and see how it did on this one. And again, we are going to go flying forward in time in a moment. There we go. And it did amazingly. It got everything correct in the validation data set. Now, of course, this is all based on the highest probabilities that it had. So let's see how it actually, how confident it was. And we can see it was quite confident according to the confusion matrix, where we want the diagonals to be as close to one as possible and the other areas to be as low as possible. Now we can do the same thing. We can look at the efficient net one. Now this actually made an error on the validation data set. Only one, it seems, but it's still an error. So right away, we're going to probably be a little bit more doubtful about this model. Let's look at the confusion matrix. We see that it did make a mistake on a sheep. And it's still very confident. So it was very confident. It did make one mistake. And as you see, the other areas are very close to zero. The diagonal is very close to one. Now, finally, we're going to look at the ResNet. Same thing and switch it to the validation holdout data set. And we see that it got everything right as well. Got a perfect one across the board. And let's look at the confusion matrix. However, it is not that certain. It's got 80%, 8, 79, 84, 83, 88. So it is a lot less certain than our transfer learning model. So let's just move on. And we have a winner. Our transfer learn model seems to have done the best. And what we need to do now is we've tested it on a validation set. And let's do a final test on our test set. Of course, as we've done before, we are going to go flying forward into the future. And here we are in the future. We can go to our test set. And we see once again, it's got ones across the board. So it got 100% accuracy. 
and let's look at our confusion matrix. It also is extremely confident. It's actually very similar to how it was for the test set. And we're done.